questions. They were very thought provoking. Even I was kind of usually the questions are so typical and easy to answer. These were like they made me think. I love it. I love a good challenge. Hey everyone, I am sitting here on a very special Saturday evening, post Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. with Natalia Globova, Miss Universe 2005. Welcome to Singapore. Ah, thank you so much, Tim. It's a pleasure to be here. We're both Canadians from two different sides of a big country, and we're both here in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. And we both have a problem telling people where are we from <laughs> <laughs> a challenge telling people yes well not tell, making people understand why we are or where we are from really right. because as canadians we are you know canadians are all from different countries right a country of many nations they call us a mosaic right exactly. mosaic of nature of really? culture of cultures of yeah. nations <laughs> and a united nations in yes. one big country but uh, welcome to singapore once again and uh, you have a book here called i am winning I do. I do. When did you write the book? So the book is published by a Canadian uh, publishing company mm -hmm. called Hasmark. And I took the time to write it in Thailand because I've been living in Thailand for the last uh, 13 years. But uh, this book just happened within about nine months of me thinking of that I want to write a book and okay. then sitting down and just working continuously for about six to seven months. And then here we are, I Am Winning is here. So what is the inspiration from I Am Winning? Was it after you won Miss Universe? Definitely, definitely. And most people would think that I Am Winning might have something to do with winning a pageant, but in fact, it has everything to do with winning in life. Okay. And winning in general. And I think the inspiration for that came from the fact that I realized that winning in life is not about any one achievement. It's about celebrating small wins daily. That's and, how you win in life. And what would you define a win? Is it a di for you? Is winning something different for me or from her or from? It absolutely is, and I think everybody can decide what winning means to them individually. Because as you will find when you're reading this book, I have examples of different people I've interviewed, mm -hmm. and they all range from you know their personalities, their occupations, their backgrounds, their education level, and every in every single way, and they're all winners in their own way. So you have to decide what does winning mean to you, because what winning means to me might not be the same for you. Exactly, and everybody <laughs> loves a winner, right? As the song goes, yes, and uh, what makes a winning, uh, for me, a winner is, it's a personality, right? Okay. It's not something you exactly do, or it's not something you win, because I've never win anything in a raffle draw. You don't have to, that's yeah. not what winning is about. So. It's about a personality or how you project yourself? I think it's about the qualities. So in the book I talk about the seven qualities, as you'll see here. Seven qualities. Gratitude, so each chapter Fearlessness, is, resilience, curiosity, confidence, generosity and awareness. Right, so if you can adapt these qualities, which I think are available to everybody in the world, mm -hmm. you can be a winner. I'm sure you know from your own experience when you feel gratitude when you feel grateful for things you feel like a winner and you can do it with small simple things like even having a glass of your favorite drink and when you drink it and you savor it and you feel so much gratitude for the fact that you are able to drink this favorite drink you can say i'm winning right now hmm. or if you're eating your favorite meal you can say i'm winning right now or doing any of your favorite activities you can be a winner in any of those small things throughout the day. And it has to be something personal, right? I don't know, you know, when, when we were growing up in Canada, back when I was younger, staying home on a Saturday night, mm -hmm. and people will think you're such a loser. <laughs> but now staying home on a Saturday night, watching my favorite show on mm -hmm. Netflix is something I love to do. And Yeah, and you can say in that moment, I'm winning I because am. I'm yes. doing something I love. I'm doing something I love, not because I'm doing it because other people expect me to do it. Exactly. So is that something yes, of well, that's, what winning is about? That's in the book as well, the deciding what you, it is that makes you a winner and not really giving into the idea of the typical illusions of success as people mm. would normally think of success in money terms or maybe in followers on social media <laughs> or whatever it is, right? Or likes. Or even in 
the number on the scale, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. What society kind of shapes the success and winning to be, it's not a one-fit-all formula. Okay. And I truly believe that if you decide exactly what you want from life and you strive to get there, that's the definition of winning. So what message would you have for somebody, and I'm asking this as a person in a personal capacity now. <laughs> okay. All right, you, you have somebody like me mm -hmm. going through an early midlife crisis of some sort. How, you know, I, I'm, I'm, enjo I, I'm enjoying it. I am truly enjoying not knowing where my life is gonna take me since five years ago okay. to the next five years. And I love it. It's, but I have a business partner who would ask me like, what are you doing in your life? Mm -hmm. You're not working, you're, you're not working full-time job, you're earning half of what you were earning mm -hmm. when you had a full-time job. I'm like, I'm living my life. Mm -hmm. I'm taking it back and I'm spending the, the time that I have the way I want to. And that for me is winning, right? I would probably describe that as the best definition of winning. <laughs> you just described that. <laughs> <laughs> I am winning. Yes. Because it's what I want yes. to do. Okay. So winning, is this something that you learn as a young person, as you grow up, that you build on these winning mm -hmm. seven formulas of winning? Or is mm -hmm. this something that somebody can learn somewhere in the middle of their life? They're having a career uh, stalemate and hey, I can do something and switch on something. Mm -hmm. Well, surely, as I mentioned, these seven qualities can be learned and adapted and practiced by absolutely everybody. And I think that even from a young age, I'm sure you could already, uh, you would have already said I have at least half of these, but I think as we, mat <laughs> <laughs> but as I think as we mature and uh -huh. grow into ourselves, we tend to practice more of these qualities, particularly things like resilience, right? Mm -hmm. Because you've fallen, many times in your life, I'm sure. And as we get older, the amount of times we failed or okay. fallen increases, but that only makes us stronger. It's only through failure that we can build that resilience and that strength and build that strength of character that okay. makes you a winner. And things like awareness, I think that comes with age as well. I think when we're younger, we're kind of scattered. We're not really sure what we want out of life yet. But as we get older, all of a sudden we realize we zero in with mm -hmm. laser focus. Okay, now I know exactly who I am. I know what I want. So, you know, non, I'm not going to negotiate anymore. And I'm not going to just, you know, waste my time on anything else. This is what I want. That's what I'm going for. It's funny you said that because five years ago when I decided to quit my job, and that, that's fearlessness by the way fearlessness there you go <laughs> to jump into something else i actually went back to well at that point 15 years ago when i left everything in vancouver not knowing what singapore was going to be like and just jump into it as a 25 year old but then it was easy back then you're young you have mm -hmm. nothing to lose mm -hmm. but i told myself i'm older now i'm wiser now i have more savings now i can probably survive it's all about in that faith in yourself that you will be able to figure everything out. And I'm sure that now more than ever, you know that that's true. Mm -hmm. That sometimes you have to take that step, especially if you're feeling unsettled or uneasy or un uncomfortable in your current situation. It's about taking that initial first step that may might be scary. But as many of the great uh, world authors like Jack Canfield, he says, everything that you want is on the other side of fear. Right? Mm, that's true. <laughs> You've heard of that, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> and so when, when did you start knowing how to win as a person, as, as Natalie? It wasn't exactly one thing that you learned just from winning the crown, let's say. It was years and years of experience. But I think that after winning the crown of Miss Universe and kind of analyzing how I did that. And throughout my life, I've applied the same kind of formula to everything else that I wanted from mm -hmm. finding the love of my life, my husband, Dean, to even starting a family, my business and everything else, you know, weight loss or uh, health goals. I've applied the same kind of formula that seems to work for me all the time. And I've put that formula in the book. And I, that's why I want to tell everybody, you can also decide what you want, practice those qualities, and you can be a winner in whatever it is that you want, but you have to know what that is. Talking about these <laughs> qualities, and you're saying that just like every skill, it's something that everyone can learn. Yes. Is, that, is that really true? Can oh, people yes. really learn? I mean, there are things that you're really born with, mm. and there are things you can fake until you learn it. <laughs> sure. Like confidence. I mean, I fake confidence 
True, true. After my mother explained to me a very, very important scene from a movie called The King and I, mm-hmm. whistle a happy tune. Ah, in your head? No, no, that, that, there was a scene uh, in okay. the movie, and I remember this clearly. It was the young boy, and I think it was uh, the mother telling him to whistle a happy tune when you're afraid and pretend that you're right. not. And, right. and hey, that's, that's how it started trick. for me as a young kid. Absolutely, and that's a great trick. And I think that some of these qualities you are born with mm-hmm. naturally, just like some people might be more athletic than others, or some people might be uh, more savvy with numbers or math, right? But there's certainly nothing here that you cannot acquire and achieve. The only thing that I feel is maybe curiosity is it also another tricky one because if you're just not curious by nature, it might be more difficult for you to all of a sudden adopt curiosity. But I think it's more, I put that in there because I want to encourage people that when you are curious and when you have that zest for life and you want to learn more, that's something you should aspire to because it can only open up your world more. It can push your, you know, stretch the mind, uh, limits of your mind and your comfort zone. So I always tell everybody, be curious. Now I'm just learning. looking at uh, this one very quickly and you don't have charisma inside of, mm. of, of all these things that you need to put mm-hmm. into action to be a winner. Charisma is a, is a good one. I, I don't really think charisma is a quality that you can learn that's actually that's one of the you're something born with, right? i think you could, you're born with it but i think charisma comes from being yourself mm. it's being when comfortable with yourself. being comfortable with yourself and just learning how to be in that present moment and speaking from the heart mm. that's what i believe charisma is and in fact awareness the quality of that is i describe in the book about being aware of your inner feelings, being aware of what's going on around you, just having that awareness of yourself and other people. Mm. So I think once you have awareness, charisma will happen naturally. How else can we apply this winning personality in everything uh, that we do in life to make us better as a person mm. and to project that, that, that winning personality mm, that winning attracts mentality. people really, right? I think one of the best ways is just Gratitude is number one, of course. I think when you tell yourself every day how lucky and blessed you are, first of all, you start believing it yourself that, hey, I am winning. Look at all of these amazing things I have. And then, of course, when you're believing it yourself, other people will also believe you because they'll see you smiling, they'll see you happy. And, you know, it's it's something that came from a funny story of Dean and I when my, our daughter Maya was just nine months old and we were sitting on the beach watching a beautiful sunset, drinking coconuts, you know, in Thailand. It's, they're so <laughs> yes. yummy and delicious. And then in just that one moment, I felt like everything was so perfect. And Dean turned to me and he said, are we winning, babe, or what? And I laughed at him because it was like, my God, we are winning with such simple things. And now it's a family joke. So if we're even on the couch watching a movie together, like you say, you know, you're sitting on Saturday night and you're just all cozy and, you know, eating popcorn or whatever. Sometimes we'll be like, we're winning. Or even if we're dressed up and going somewhere to a fancy event, we're winning. So it could be from simple things. If you can just take the time and every day, I think winning is about deriving joy from the everyday simple tasks and simple things in your in your life. And really redefining it to what winning is for you exactly, personally and right. not what it is for them right. as people looking at your social media. Mm. I think social media is actually detrimental to our feeling of winning, isn't it? <laughs> mm, it is because you kind of compare oh my God. yourself and to people. Everybody compares. You know, I'll be honest with you, I compare myself too. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not immune to this. I think as human beings, it's part of our nature to look at other people and say, oh, hey, whoa, wait a minute. I'm, I'm sure, of course. And that's why I limit my, um, my time scrolling because I find that whenever I scroll too much and see all of these kind of illusions of success, I tend to also look inward and say, okay, but wait a minute, how do I stack up against this? And it's so natural, it's so normal. And of course, I remind myself that it's not about comparison. Everyone has their own path, their own timing, and their own way, and their own definition of winning. But I think it's so important to limit that time that you spend just mindlessly scrolling, because it will chip away at your happiness. 
hmm, or just don't compare yourself to all those people. Enjoy what they're showing you. Yes, but it's it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. I'll be honest with you. It's it's not easy. Yeah, here's where you know? I come to help you rewire your brain to not think about it that way because I enjoy looking at other people's lives. And sure, of course, and I feel happy for them. Mm -hmm. But it sometimes it makes me feel like I'm not doing enough. As as much as I'm happy for them, I just feel like am I doing enough? And again, I'm just saying this because it's a natural feeling. But uh, I'm reading a book by the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Desmond Tutu right now called The Book of Joy. And they talk a lot about envy and jealousy and all of those things. And the two of them actually disagree. Archbishop Desmond Tutu thinks it's natural and we should forgive ourselves for that. But Dalai Lama, he says that we need to train ourselves how to prevent the feeling of jealousy. <laughs> so don't compare, just be happy, set your own winning formula. I mean, set your own definition of what it is to win. That's right, that's right. That's super important because whatever you're looking at and you might think, wow, that person is living the life. But ask yourself, do I really want that? Because probably not. Yeah. You probably have your own unique definition that if you achieve that definition, you'll be so much happier. There you go. Natalia Glebova <laughs> there, I am winning, is a guide to personal empowerment. Empowerment. And this is not just for women, it's for everybody. It's absolutely for everybody. And where can they get the book? It's available on Amazon, of course, mm -hmm. for worldwide delivery. I also sell it on natalieglebova.com, my website, where I can personally autograph it for you and ship it to you as well. <laughs> and it's available all in all Asia, Asia bookstores across Thailand and in Hong Kong. It's on Kelly and Walsh. And hopefully we'll be here in Singapore soon. <laughs> Well, there you go. You can find a book uh, uh, from Amazon. That will be the fastest way to get the book. I am winning mm -hmm. a personal, a guide to personal empowerment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. And may I just say you are winning. Just from hearing your little story about how you took the risk and you left a comfortable job, but you're doing what you love on mm -hmm. your own terms. To me, as I said, that is the definition of winning. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. You heard it from Natalia Globova, a winner herself, Miss Universe 2005, an author of I Am Winning. You go check it out too from her website. She will sign it for you if you do that. Better than Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tim. <laughs>